Hello and welcome back to the Crime Reel. In the third of our seven cases this week, we shall be looking at a crime that occurred on Easter Sunday, 1975. This horrific crime became one of the deadliest family massacres in United States of America's history and shocked all of those involved with its calculated brutality. James Urban Rupert was born on the 29th of March 1934, the youngest son of Charity and Leonard Rupert. His elder brother, named Leonard after their father, was two years older than him. James was bright with a high IQ. He studied engineering at the University of Cincinnati, but never completed the requirements for graduation. He drifted between jobs working for various companies across the US. His last known job was at Production Design Services in Dayton, Ohio, where he was described as a good employee, but had to be laid off when work at the company dried up. By 1975, at the age of 40, He was unemployed and living with his mother on Minor Street in Hamilton, near Cincinnati. Neighbours described Charity as a very nice kind person who was devoted to her sons and grandchildren, and James as always nice, a very quiet person. However, there was trouble brewing inside the Rupert household. James owed money to both his brother and mother after the stock market crash in the early 1970s. He had recently wrecked his convertible Cadillac and was now driving an old Volkswagen. James, who was 5 foot 5 inches tall and very slightly built, was described by some as being a meek, quiet loner, a person who could easily be overlooked. Charity had become increasingly frustrated with her younger son's inability to hold down a steady job and was also threatening to evict him. Meanwhile, his brother Leonard had a life that James became increasingly envious of. He had a degree in electrical engineering and a successful career. Leonard was married to Alma, who happened to be one of James's ex-girlfriends. They had eight children and owned a home in Fairfield, Ohio, where they were described as just good people by their friend and neighbour, Keith Brinker. Clearly, James and Leonard were not close, with many of Leonard's friends being unaware that he even had a brother. James would later describe his troubled childhood His father had a violent temper and died in 1947 when James was just 12 years old. After this, James's brother, Leonard, became the father figure of the family and, according to James, Leonard and their mother, Charity, would often gang up on him. His mother would often tell him that he was a mistake and she wanted to have a daughter as her second child. James would later state that his mother tried to make him into a girl by the way she combed his hair and she also talked baby talk to him. He truly believed that his mother hated him. She would taunt and beat him and encourage Leonard to join in. According to James, there was one occasion when he was 15 years old where he threw his dinner plate on the floor and Charity and Leonard took him to the basement and beat him with a rubber hose as punishment. James ran out of the house and returned later that evening whereupon he considered ending his own life but he could not bring himself to do it. James would also claim that during his upbringing Leonard would relentlessly taunt him for being a weakling. He suffered from asthma as a young boy and was not allowed to do many of the things that other children his age could do. On Saturday, March the 29th, 1975, this was James's 41st birthday and he took his guns to the Great Miami River, a favourite spot for target practice, and spent the afternoon shooting tin cans. That evening he went to the 19th Hole Cocktail Lounge a place where he would visit several times a week to enjoy a few beers, but he was never known to drink to excess. During that particular evening, he spent time talking to 28-year-old employee Wanda Bishop. Wanda, a single mother with five children, had met James at the bar some eight months earlier, and the pair would see each other several times a week when James visited the bar and also would sometimes go out at weekends. That particular evening, James was frustrated with the demands that his mother was putting upon him and said that he needed to solve the problem. He left the bar at 11pm, returning a while later. Wanda asked if he had solved his problem, to which James replied, No, not yet. He remained at the bar until it closed at 2.30am. On Easter Sunday, 30th of March 1975, 
Leonard, Alma and their children went to an early church service before having Easter lunch with Alma's parents and brothers. They then left to spend the remainder of Easter Sunday at Charity's house. Whilst Leonard, Alma, Charity and the children enjoyed an Easter egg hunt, James stayed upstairs in his bedroom. James joined the rest of his family at around 4pm, by which time Leonard, Alma and Charity were in the kitchen preparing food for the evening. When James went downstairs, Leonard asked him, how's the Volkswagen? Whether this question was delivered as an insult to his younger brother, who had had to downgrade his car, we will never know. However, we do know that this question sent James into a rage. He returned to his room and collected his guns, a three fifty seven Magnum, two 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 caliber handguns and a rifle. James went back down to the kitchen and shot Leonard in the head. James continued shooting, first his sister-in-law and mother who lunged at him in an attempt to stop him, then the three children who were in the kitchen at that time, 12-year-old Anne, 11-year-old David and Teresa who was nine. He then went into the lounge where 17-year-old Leonard III tried to confront James but was also shot. James continued shooting the rest of the family, 13-year-old Carol, 16-year-old Michael, Thomas who was 15 and John who was just four years old. He shot each victim at least once to stop them running away and then methodically shot each in the head to ensure that they were dead. The children were found surrounded by Easter eggs with one still holding an egg with the foil partially removed in their hand. The youngest child, four-year-old John, was found with his hands pressed against his ears presumably to block out the sound of the gunfire. In a massacre which was over in just a couple of minutes, James fired 44 shots, 40 of which hit his victims and 38 of these causing lethal wounds on the 11 people that he killed. James then remained in the house for several hours. He laid on the sofa considering whether to end his own life. However, as he believed that act was a mortal sin, he did not want that to be his last action. Instead, he changed his clothes and then called the police saying, there's been a shooting. He then waited at the front door for the authorities to arrive. The scene that greeted the police was horrific. They found five bodies in the living room and six in the kitchen. There was so much blood that it had dripped through the floorboards into the basement. However, the only sign of a struggle was an overturned waste paper basket. James was arrested but became very uncooperative with the police. On the advice of his attorneys, he refused to say anything. On Thursday the 3rd of April, 400 people packed into the Sacred Heart Catholic Church on Nilly's Road to pay their last respects to the family. The 11 coffins filled the aisles of the church and used every available hearse from both Hamilton and Fairfield. The family were laid to rest the following day at Arlington Memorial Gardens. James pleaded innocent by reason of insanity to 11 counts of aggravated murder. Psychiatric reports were prepared and by May 1975 it was established that, although he did indeed suffer from some form of mental illness, he was mentally fit to stand trial. He formally waived his right to a jury trial, opting for a three-judge panel instead. The trial began in July 1975 where the prosecution argued that the insanity defence was all part of his master plan and his motive was to later get his hands on the family's estimated $300,000 estate. His defence team stated James's details about his childhood and that James believed there was a conspiracy against him by his mother, brother and later the FBI in which they systematically sabotaged his car and his efforts to get a job. The defence went on to state that he had been medically and legally insane for 10 years. The three judges found him guilty by a 2 to 1 majority and he was sentenced to 11 consecutive life terms in prison. Various appeals followed and in 1977, James's conviction was overturned on the basis that his waiver of a jury trial was not knowing, voluntary and intelligent since he had been incorrectly informed by counsel and the presiding judge that a three-judge panel's verdict must be unanimous. Appeals for an acquittal based on the double jeopardy rule were dismissed and the case went to trial again. In July 1982, 
After a trial lasting six weeks, eight women and four men returned a verdict of guilty of aggravated murder in the deaths of Leonard and Charity, for which James received two consecutive life sentences. He was found not guilty by reason of insanity for the nine other murders. There was further heartbreak for the remaining family members when on the third anniversary of the murders, Frank Algiers sadly ended his own life. Alma's mother, Edna, found him on the kitchen floor. After the massacre, the house was cleaned, recarpeted, and several different families have lived there. It is unclear whether they would be aware of the events that occurred there back in 1975, as the state categorises murder as a psychological stigma, and as such, estate agents are not required to tell potential buyers about it. James was denied parole in 1995, 2005 and 2015. In 2015, the Allen Oakwood Correctional Institution Parole Board released a statement. The board has determined that the inmate is not suitable for release at this time. The inmate has not completed any recommended programming and does not appear to be willing to do so. The inmate's record notes negative institutional conduct. The inmate took the lives of multiple victims. There has been strong community objections to his release. The release of this inmate would not be in the best interest of justice. James was moved to Franklin Medical Center in Columbus, Ohio in 2019 because of his declining health and died of natural causes on the 4th of June 2022. He was 88 years old. That concludes today's case. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Click like and add any comments down below. Don't forget to join us at the same time tomorrow when we shall be looking at a crime that took place on Mother's Day. Thanks very much for listening to today's case on the crime reel. Stay safe. Goodbye.